uh, James and the Giant Peach, 27. Um, when the giant peach floated in the sky, and um, it got um, gray, and uh, they reached the, over the mountain, and, but and they saw um, some kind of uh, hairy, and um, they were cloud cloud men. Um, so. Most of insects were afraid of cloud men, but the centipede um, made fun of them the top of the uh, giant beach. And so, um, the cloud men were so powerful, they could make hail and snow and uh, so hissing the sound with the wind, so and the cloud men uh, attacked giant fishes, and uh, including uh, insect and James. Uh, they um, uh, threw the uh, hails, to, which was uh, as big as a uh, uh, ball, um, like baseball, and then uh, they were hit. Um, James or other insect were hit. They um, hurried into uh, the tunnels, and then they. Um, Len away um, into the tunnels. They were um, they needed a uh, safe place. So I'm going to read the next chapter 28. Reviewing and reading is a little bit good. So and improving um, speaking skill or um, reading comprehension. 28. One by one, the travelers came out again onto the top of the pitch and gazed carefully around. The moon was still shining as brightly as ever, and there were still plenty of huge shimmering cloud mountains on all sides. But there were no cloud men in sight now. The pitch is leaking. Out the old green grasshoppers appearing over the side. It's full of cold and juice in dripping out everywhere. That does it, cried the earthworms. If the pitch is leaking, then we shall surely sink. Don't be an ass, the scientist told him. We are not in the water now. Oh, look, shouted the labor. Look, 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 over there, everybody swung round to look. In the distance and directly ahead of them, they now saw the most extraordinary sight. It was a kind of arc, a corridors, a curvy shaped thing that reached high up into the sky and came down again at both ends. The ends were resting upon a huge plastic cloud that was as big as a desert. Now, what in the world is that? asked James. It's a bridge. It's an enormous hoop cut in half. It's a giant uh, um, horseshoe and standing upside down. Stop me if I am wrong. Murmur the centipede is going white, uh, white in the face. And might those not be cloud men climbing all over it? There was a dreadful silence. The peach floated closer and closer. They are cloud men. There are hundreds of them. Thousands. Millions. I don't want to be here about it, shrieked the poor blind earthworm. I'd rather be on the end of a fish hook and Use that way, then come up against the, those terrible creature again. I'd rather be pride alive and eaten by a Mexican. Um, well, the old grasshopper, please get quiet, whispered James. It's our only hope. And they crouched very still on top of the peach, staring at the cloud man. And the whole surface of the cloud was literally swarming with them, and there were hundreds more up above, screaming, Oh, on that monstrous crazy arc. Well, what is that thing? whispered the ladybug, and what are they doing to it? I don't care so what they are doing to it, the centipede said, scuttling over the tunnel entrance. I'm not staying up here. Goodbye. But the rest of them was too frightened or too hypnotized by the whole of hers to make a move. Do you know what? James whispered. What? Wow. They said what? Wow. That in a moment or two they seem to be painting it. They've got pots of paint and big brushes, you look. 
and he was quite right. The travelers were close enough to now to see that this was exactly what the cloud men were doing. They were all had huge brush in their hand, and they um was splashing the paint onto the gray, great curvy arc uh, in a fringe of speed so far. In fact, that in a few minutes, the whole of the arc uh, became covered with the most gorgeous, glorious color, red, blue, green, yellows, and purples. Rainbow, everyone said at once. They are making a rainbow. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Just look at those colors. Send feet, they shouted. You must come up and see this. They were so enthralled by the beauty and brilliance of the rainbow that they forgot to keep their voices low any longer. The centipede poked his head cautiously out of the tunnel entrance. Well, 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 he said, I've always wondered how those things were made. But why all the law? And what are they doing with those laws? Good heaven, they are pushing it off the cloud, cried James. Ah, there it goes. And they are rolling it down to the earth with ropes. And I'll tell you something else, the centipede said sharply. If I'm not greatly mistaken, we ourselves are going to bump right into it. Bless my soul, he right. the old green grasshopper exclaimed. And the rainbow was now dangling in the air below the cloud. The pitch was also just below the level of the cloud. It was heading directly toward the rainbow. Traveling rather fast. We are lost, Miss Spider cried, rings the her feet again. And has come. I can't stand it. Well, the earthworms tell me what's happening. We are going to miss it, shouted the ladybug. No, uh, we are not. Yes, we are. Yes, yes. No, no, oh my heaven. Hold on, everybody, James called out, and suddenly there was a tremendous thud. As the peaches went crashing into the top of a part of the rainbow, this was followed by an awful splintering noise as the enormous rainbow snapped right across the middle and became two separate pieces. The next thing that happened was extremely unfortunate. Ropes, the cloud man, that had been using to pull rolling. The rainbows got tangled up with the six strings, and that went up from the peach to the cigars. The peach was trapped. But the panic and um, pandemonium broke out among the travelers. The James Henry Trotter glanced up the quickly, saw the face, uh, face of thousands of fierce crowd of men peering down at the team over the edge of the crowd. Their faces had almost no shape at all because of no, the long white hairs that covered them. And there were no noses, no mouths, no ears, no chins. Only the eyes were visible in each face. The small black eyes, the grinching male bar run to least through the airs. Then came the most frightening thing of all. So one crowd of men of huge hairy creatures that must have been fourteen feet tall at least suddenly threw up and made a tremendous leap up side of the cloud trying to get to one of the six strings of the beach. James and his friends saw him go flying through the airs above them. His arms are straight in front of him, reaching for the nearest strings, and uh, they saw him and grabbed it and uh, cling to it and with his hands and legs. And then, very, very slowly, hand over hand, he began to come down the string. Must have savers, cried the ladybug. He's come down to eat us. Well, the old green grasshopper jumped overboard, then to eat the earthworms first, they shouted, doesn't fit it. It's no good eating me, I'm full of bones like a kipper. Said Phil, yelled James, quickly bite through the strings and all on this is coming down on. The centipede rushed over the stem of the peach and then took the silk string in his teeth and bit through it with one snap of his jaws. Immediately, far above them, the single secret was seen to come away from the rest of the plow and go flying off with a long string trailing from his neck. And the queen, desperate, the end of the string, shouting, crushing with fury. It was a huge, hairy crowd man, up and up he went, and swinging across the moonlit sky, and James Henry Trotter, watching with delight, said, My goodness, we must do almost nothing at all for one seagull to be able to pull him up just like that. He must be all hair and hair. The rest of the cloud men were so flabbergasted at seeing one of their company carried away in this manner that they let go of the ropes they were holding and then, of course, down and the rainbow and the both halves of it together, tumbling back toward the earth below, 
this three peaches which